Right now, Corsair don't have a mouse in my top mice list, but that changes with these sabers. It's pretty simple. We just want a good shape with low weight, a sensor that doesn't lose track, low latency, and good features on the buttons, cable, and maybe wireless too. And that's what we get here, in wired and wireless. The wired actually has 8000 Hz, but more on that later. The Corsair sabers seem to have been inspired by the IntelliMouse design philosophy, so if you're after a large mouse designed for right hand use, but with modern improvements, this could be an option. The wired pro version weighs about 73 grams, while the wireless weighs about 80. And the balance is pretty good on the wired version, a little toward the back maybe, but while gripping it, it feels solid. The wireless has a little extra weight in the back, most likely from the battery, but I was still able to stabilize it in game. I think they could work to balance it a bit better though. Just an estimate using my expected weight ratio, where I multiply the dimensions together for a general idea. To be considered lightweight by today's standards, they would have to be about 76 grams. So the wired is 3 grams under that weight, and the wireless is 4 grams over. 4 grams over for wireless is actually pretty good. So by this I'd say Corsair have done pretty well to get such a large mouse this light. Now let's look at the shape. From the top you can see how the right side flares out a bit, thus to help keep a more natural placement for your fingers. It's a safe shape, you can basically put your fingers anywhere, and they even made sure the front was rounded, so no sharp edge. If you hang your fingers over, or place them really far forward, this should feel good. Then there are some subtle comfort curves in the buttons, which I always like, and the thumb side sort of flares out at the base, which is to help keep your thumb lifted. Actually the same is true for the other side, really hard to show on camera, but if you remember the original Sabre, it had this philosophy too. They flare out at the base, to help keep your fingers and thumb from dragging, but Corsair have gone a more subtle route this time, which I think is a good idea. The issue is that if you have a wider base and curve it inward, it can become harder to pick up, and it gives you less room. Like on the first HyperX Pulsefire or Fnatic Flick, it just makes them harder to grip. This one seems a little better though, fits in the hand for me a bit more comfortably. In theory, we'd want really flat sides to be completely safe, but then we'd lose the benefit of comfort and improved lift. So that said, they've got just enough curvature above that to assist with picking it up. It's not quite as comfortable as others, but it is a good balance to give the benefits of both. Kind of jack of all trades, master of none style. You can get better gripping mice and better comfort mice, but this is a combination of the two. However, if you have large thumbs, which I assume you do if you're interested in this mouse, you might find there isn't quite enough room for your thumb. Mine fits easily, but at about 18 by 9 centimeters, this is too big for my hand. The dimensions are about 6 centimeters between the fingers. That's the grip width. 12.7 long, and 4.24 high, with a button height at about 2.4 centimeters. With the hump in the middle, I can palm this easily. So speaking of hand sizes, I'd say palm up to 19 centimeters, claw grip 19.5 to 23 centimeters, and fingertip 18 to 23. Obviously you want to go in between those numbers, but this is a big mouse. Here it is next to some other mice, so you get an idea of the size. Definitely in the death out of size range, so this is a top tier mouse for the larger handed among us. They say 8000Hz on the wide copy and 2000Hz on the wireless. This is the first time I'm hearing that 2000Hz is on wireless. So I did some latency tests starting with the bomb test. Viper 8K vs Sabre wireless. This is with the button optimization on and the Viper is winning that by a tiny bit. Viper also wins against the Sabre wired at 8K. Again, the button optimization is on. Testing the Sabres against each other, the wired wins by a bit. A quick look at the polling rate. According to the software, none of them are able to hit 8K. But that's because the 8000Hz thing is not being understood correctly. It's more about lower latency, so you can basically ignore these numbers. This isn't how we're going to see the difference. So now we disable the optimization on the sabers, and somehow this test seems to favor the mouse on the pad. So don't take this stuff too seriously. It's a good little test to get a general idea, but nothing like absolute fact. That said, with the button optimization disabled, the sabers seem to get better response times. But I mean we're talking such low numbers here, I would leave that on because without that on, you can get issues. Like when you tap the mouse, so when you pick it up and put it down too hard, it can activate the buttons. So yeah, I'd leave that on because the lower latency advantage you'd get is so small, I doubt you're going to notice. However, if you play Minecraft and want those extra clicks, just turn them off and you should be good to go. I did the 1000 FPS test as well, but there's so little difference, it could be up to user error. So the bad news is, I can't tell you exactly what's going on here. The good news is, I don't think it matters. But hey, it's cool to have these features anyway, so credit to Corsair for that. The reason you want the button response optimization is if it's off and you tap these mice, even after you flick the mouse and you put it back down, it can activate the buttons. Watch even as I clap pretty gently. 
Notice it fires each time on wireless and wired. This is an old problem and one they've already fixed with the software. So yeah, just change this setting and see now it doesn't fire. Speaking of buttons, here's a sound test. Nice click on the left and right, pretty standard. They're not hard to click and they have a pretty good sound. Didn't have accidental clicks either with my finger weight. And the middle button is harder to press in of course, but feels fine. The wheel feels light, but the tension on the steps seems close to perfect, in my opinion. It's smooth to scroll, but you can also feel each step. And it's not too loud either. The side buttons have a good click, very little pre-travel, a little post-travel, but nothing too bad. So almost full marks on the buttons, they seem pretty good. Quality wise, a few creaks when I squeeze, but nothing major or worth worrying about. As always, if you have a loose panel, it might be worth returning. My copies seem fine though. There is a rattle if you shake it, that just seems to be the wheel. Didn't affect in gameplay, so not really a problem. Just something they can look at in the future. And pretty much no pre-travel on the clicks. Tiny amount of side travel, but nothing I noticed outside of direct testing. This will vary from copy to copy of course, but my copies are fine. So despite going low weight, these mice seem pretty well made. The cable on the wired version is one of these new soft braided cables, but it holds its shape. It's not quite as flexible as it could be. Still, the last time I used a Corsair mouse, these were much worse, so I'm glad they're improving it. They could improve further to get to where the industry is now, but given how late I am to reviewing these, I guess for back then, it was still pretty good. Didn't give me any issue in a bungee, which I still recommend getting for wired mice. Now, one issue is that unfortunately, they didn't include an adapter with the wireless version, which just comes with this rubber cable. The reason that's important is so you don't have to use two USB ports. So usually you run the charging cable up from the PC, then just use this adapter and put the wireless receiver in there. When you want to charge it up, you just unplug the adapter and put in the cable in the mouse. The other issue is that without the adapter, if your PC is far away, so is the receiver, because that's where you have to plug it in, unless you have a USB pass through. I've already asked Corsair about this, and hopefully they start including an adapter with the mice in the future. Quick note, they also have Bluetooth mode. But of course, you're better off sticking with the wireless for gaming. The feet feel fine to me, but I like control pads with slow feet. A fair few people complained when Razer released a Viper with these dyed feet. So if that's an issue for you, you probably have an issue with this too. And you can always get a faster pad if you really want speed. In-game testing, unfortunately, the first wireless copy I had just seemed to stop working from time to time. But I since got another copy and that one's fine, so I think I just got a dud. If you have any issues like that with any mouse, definitely contact support and return them. So yeah, both the wired and wireless copies perform really well in game. No issues on the sensor, the tracking is solid. Some people have been asking for mice with a more forward sensor position. Personally, I think our brains adapt to wherever it might be. I don't notice changes like these. Software as usual you get with Corsair. Quick look through the key assignment options. Lighting effects. Hardware lighting effects where you don't need IQ running. Huge range on DPI, any step you want pretty much. The wired has a window setting too, but you can't see what the steps are. Probably best not to touch this. The one fell faster, so I measured out the DPI and when compared to the Viper AK, and I color coded the results. The yellow is the Sabre Wireless, CN is Sabre Wired, and Viper is green. So it looks like the Sabre Wireless has a different number to the other two. That's at 800 DPI, but then at 1600 DPI, it looks like the Sabre Wireless is the same as the Viper 8K. So if you want the exact sensitivity when changing to this, make sure you measure out your 360 with your old mouse. Then adjust your sensitivity or DPI until the Sabre does the same 360. And really, you should be doing that every time you change mouse anyway, if you really care about it that much. I personally just change my sensitivity in game a bit. Not an issue for me, but I only play one game. To conclude, we really don't have that many large lightweight mice on the market, especially wireless with the asymmetrical shelves. I've been saying recently that there are still some pretty big gaps in the market, and whatever you might think of this mouse, or you wish it did better or worse, it's kind of irrelevant. Because if this is the type of mouse that suits you, there aren't many other options at the time of this review. We all want the perfect product, but the perfect product doesn't exist. So the logic goes like this. I prefer this shape over the Razer Death Adder, and the Zowie EC1 turns me off a bit with those side buttons and scroll, plus weight. So Corsair have actually done a really good job here, giving us some great features, and a fill for the gap of large, asymmetrical, lightweight mice with good shapes. I could go on about how everything can be improved, but that's true of everything, always. So honestly, I'm actually pretty impressed. 
That's coming from someone who people actually thought was a Corsair mouse hater. I'm not a Corsair hater, I love Corsair, but they have to get things right before I praise them. And these feel pretty right, so they finally get my praise. Good job. As always, check my site and use some mouse search, and see if you can find any mice like this that get ranked higher in the future. Until then, these are a great choice. So I hope that helps, use your links below. Thanks to Corsair for sending them out for testing and review. As always, all opinions are honest and my own. None of this changes the way I think. I just want to play better, and I'm trying to help people choose some mice that will help them play better too. Without the challenge, gaming is boring. And subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.